Yeah. My phone still echo, the feds won't let go. Money. Hey everybody, it's the coach. This is a special edition of the Divisional Round Playoffs. From a city that's played host to 10 Super Bowls, here's a look inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans. Coming up, an important divisional round matchup in the NFC between the Arizona Cardinals and the New Orleans Saints. First down, it'll set up a second and seven. What's the old expression? Three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust covered pellets. Still right, remember that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. Well, second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looks pretty good until the finish. And now it's Rosen looking. Able to find Harris complete. They give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you got a heck of a tight end candidate. Second down, Johnson. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. I know flashy plays, splashy plays, as people like to call them. That attracts a lot of attention. But let's face it, when you're efficient, that can control a ball game. And I love the game plan they've got going right now. Back-to-back -back five yard games. Didn't force the ball downfield. And he's got daylight. It's a foot race. Touchdown, Cardinals! Christian Kirk, 45 yards. And the Cardinals have taken the early lead. Forget about the storylines of being intimidated in the playoffs on the road. I mean, that was pretty clinical right there. Yeah, they didn't treat it like it was a playoff game in January, did they? No. Look. That felt much more like, hey, we're back in August, running a few drills in the practice field. They seem unaffected by what they're facing in this one. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Play action here on first down. Well, he's going to take a shot right away. And it's knocked away and incomplete. There defensively to break that one up, Ken Crawley. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. And he's unable to grab it. Thought he might have had position, couldn't hold on third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. 
They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll take this one up close to the 25-yard line. Robert! Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. They're going to try and throw. And he's got his man Hilton. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Well, that's good for a first down. There's a guy who went over 1,000 yards receiving in the regular season, and now he's got his first catch of the playoffs. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. 16 yards there. Two straight plays of 16 yards and another first down. Right back to him on first down. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. And yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. They call that a loss of six yards. And it's third down now. They'll set up a throw. And this is going to be incomplete. I will see more of them trying to get him the football out of the backfield. They love what he can do in open space, and they believe that he creates mismatches they can exploit. Again, the offense will stay out there. They've converted once on this drive. What can they do here on fourth down? Green 39! Green 39! Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And that is going to be incomplete. Breaking that one up, the former All-Pro Josh Norman. Well, I guess they wanted to get that touchdown right back on their first drive, but failed to do so. And what they have to be careful of is pushing so hard to stay right there, to stay even with their opponent, that they gas themselves out. You know, it's almost like horse racing. Sometimes you don't want to take your horse right to the front and let them do all the work, and then someone catch them at the end and pass them up. You want to make sure you moderate what you're doing along the way and then go for the big finish. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size and these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Four catches for him in the wild card win a week ago, and he's got his first here, and it's a first down. First down carry here for Johnson. He gets away from one. And down to the 36-yard line here. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. They'll hand it off now. Johnson. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. They give them 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, right, moving that defensive front backwards. But also like what the runner is giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it's a second down. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. And they go the wrong way here. Knocked back to the 20. Call that a loss of five yards on the play. And that'll lead here to a third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable, and you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say, play action. Yeah, without a doubt, that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? No, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Once you get into the red zone and the safeties have less ground to cover, you better be quick with your delivery. Not much space to get a ball in there. Yeah, when that field shrinks with those safeties, it's almost like there's a couple extra defenders out there, right? It certainly is. They end up taking up extra space 
just because there's not enough space for receivers to run through. So chalk that down as an eight-play drive capped with a field goal. Yeah, as a friend of mine used to say, they were moving and grooving for a while, but they couldn't keep the momentum going enough to get a touchdown out of it. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And on that last drive, went for it on fourth, turned it over. A good job by their defense, though. They held him to three. But this offense, they've got to be a little bit better, a little bit more careful here. And sometimes when you see these calls on fourth down, when they decide to go for it, it's not necessarily the coach saying, I believe in my offense. Sometimes the coach saying, I believe in my defense. I can afford to go for it here because if we don't get it, We'll give up more than three, and that's exactly what you happened there. Factored in. I do. I think that he had that in his mind going into the game that I'm going to be aggressive on offense because I know I've got a defense that can hold up their end. And he takes it past the 45 and down at the 46. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. They'll run it now out of the gun. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. One quarter gone in this NFC Divisional Round matchup. 10-zip our score. We'll head back to New Orleans after this. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. It's Saints football to begin quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and ten. Now a first carry for Giovanni Bernard. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old-school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense? Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. They'll drop to throw. Quick throw that's complete on the inside slam. His first reception of the divisional round matchup, but it's good for a first down as well. A first opportunity upcoming in the red zone for the Saints. They've got a first and 10 at the 15. And effective running here. They'll take it down inside the 10. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. And when you get good yards like that on first down, it really does a hook. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. An eight-yard touchdown run. And the Saints have cut it back within a score. Solid job up front. Really just a solid job all the way around to get that one in. Yeah, that was well executed, wasn't it? Well blocked, well run. End result, six points. Touchdown. Being chased out left. And he'll get in for the two points. And in so doing, cut the deficit to two points. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Cardinals offense now works their way back onto the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. Here we go now. Green, 39. They'll run it now. Out of the gun. And he works his way forward for a couple up past the 30. 
doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. The ball popped in the air and intercepted. William Jackson with a pick. They had a terrific return there. They're finally able to corral him down near the 11-yard line. And, Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively of getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out, okay, where's he going with the football? Because you can make an educated Detroit! guess defensively, Detroit! not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you've got a decent chance of coming away with the football. His throw incomplete. It was DJ Swearinger right there on the coverage. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down, the offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. And able to get him inside the five here, just inside the five to about the four. Eight yards on the run there, and that leaves him with third and just a couple. He'll look to throw, and he's got it. Touchdown, Saints. Paul Richardson from four yards out. And the Saints are able to cash in for six. And all about timing there on that short slant, Charles. Exactly right. That was timed up so well. The route, the throw, touchdown. And now they'll empty the backfield here as they elect to go for two. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. Flushed out right. And he will get into the end zone to extend the lead by two more. So two successful two-point tries now for them. And you know what it does? It gives you a boost, a huge one for your team because, hey, you're dominating them now. They can't stop you either scoring touchdowns or two-point conversions. But how about the defense? You don't know what to do at this stage. You can't stop them in any direction. Josh Rosen and company getting set for their next possession. He's had a solid start to this game, but bottom line is they're losing, so he doesn't care about his stats. He just wants to write the ship on the scoreboard. He wants to actually increase his stats because right, he feels like if he does, that means things will get better for his team, maybe get him back into the ball game or into the lead. In these situations, I remember playing with a quarterback once where he actually ran out onto the field first ahead of everyone else just to say, guys, let's go. Try and create that energy, create that spark. Well, so far he has one touchdown, one interception. He'll be looking for that second touchdown now. They'll run it now out of the gun. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. On third down, Rosen. And the Saints pressure gets it. Brought down for a sack. Cameron Jordan in there to get him for a loss of nine. And that'll lead to fourth down. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. It's a nifty return of 29 yards. And the Saints will have a short field in front of them. They take over here, first and 10. Play fake here on first down. He's going to walk one deep left side here. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by DJ Swearinger. Oh, and that's a nice job defensively to get a piece of the football. He's going to pop it into the air, and then it's the tip drill. And good concentration by him to react to it and pull in the interception. Right, here we go. After the interception, here's Rosen. He gets it complete to Harris. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. And, partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal. Because everything was right. Got the completion. But he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't 
can turn it into much more. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. So they go out of the gun, try to delay it on the draw, but nothing there. Yeah, good play by the defense there. They sniffed it out and made sure there were no gaps for him to run. If you're the offense, though, you have to think to yourself, maybe I could play action down the road. A battle for it, and it's intercepted. Picked off around the 41. And they'll start with great field position at the 41-yard line. That's sort of a second quarter to forget for him. Now two picks in this frame. Almost as if the first one that he threw, he couldn't shake, couldn't get it out of his head. He ends up throwing a second one as a result. Compounds the mistake a little bit. Yeah, you got to be able to forget, compartmentalize, whatever you want to call it, and move on. He hasn't been able to do so here in the second. And that one falls incomplete. Looked like he might have had position there, but he couldn't hold on it at second down. Here now is second and 10, again from the 41. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll take it inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. He only got a couple on that one, so not a ton of help. They'll have a third and eight forthcoming. They'll run it now out of the gun. Just a gain of two there, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. The offense going to stay out there. They've converted once, failed once. What can they do here on fourth down? They'll set up to throw. He's going to lock one, and this is caught. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. In for the score. And the Saints add on to their lead. Wow, talk about a big fourth down conversion for the score defensively. How do you let that happen? Yeah, I think you start with the offense and you give them credit for going for it, having that kind of... Well, let's face it, audacity. But defensively, I think you're right on target, partner. There's no way something like that's supposed to happen in that situation. You're supposed to be able to shut that down and get the ball back for your own team. Instead, they give up not just a big play, but a touchdown. David Johnson now gears up to help lead this offense back on the field. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people, after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. A good pick up there, a 22. First down now, but that clock rolling. Off the play fake, here's Rosen. And his throw is incomplete. The positioning here is key. As a defensive back, you're taught 99% of the time, make a play on the football. But in this case, making a play on the man was all the difference. That's what forced the incompletion. Rosen again on second and ten, and that is incomplete. Coverage there by the former first-round pick, William Jackson. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. Seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home, and they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync, only way to play good defense. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Harris. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. And now the Saints are going to take a timeout on defense as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Barry on the punt as he gets this one away. And good hustle here as this is going to be blown dead right at the 9-yard line. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead. But a mistake there, that could change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. 
Well, partner, they're not content to run this one out as we head towards the half, trying to hit a big chunk play right there and add to their score. Now, this is a confident group. At the very least, they're Detroit, thinking field Detroit. goal. Yeah, and I don't blame them one bit. I don't think you sit on the ball going into the half when you have a chance to put some more points on the board. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. And that will be incomplete with a clock showing 18 seconds now to go. It was DJ Swearinger right there on the coverage. It was no secret who they were trying to get the football to. Well, no, they went to him on first down, second down, third down, all three incomplete. Yeah, and when you're unable to connect and you force it in that direction, all you're doing is giving confidence to the defense. They feel like they're really hurting you in a big way. And on fourth down, they come up and take the knee. The Cardinal offense now making their way back out onto the field. I don't know why you would do that. It's almost guaranteed points the other way. I mean, I get it if it's a late-game situation, maybe even fourth and inches. But, boy, that's a huge risk to take. Yeah, now they're set up in prime position going the other way. Let's go! Now it's Rosen. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. Good yardage on first down. Now can they punch it in on second and goal? From the gun, it's Rosen. And he's taken down here by the Saints. And they'll burn the timeout with five seconds left. A chance to try to add three points before heading to the locker room. And now they'll take a timeout defensively. After the second down play, they burn the timeout, making them sweat out the final few ticks here in the second quarter. So on third down, the field goal unit will come out as they'll try to get three before half. And his kick is right there. It's good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So the three points here, they're still down, but they put somewhat of a dent into that lead going into the break. Anything helps when you're trying to chip away at a lead, but they do know that they're going to need a little bit better effort in the second half. Final play of the first half, barring a penalty as they come up on first and ten. They'll throw now on the final play. He's going to float this one deep right side. This is intercepted. Fuller Baker with a pick. And his guys are going to take over at the 21-yard line. We now proceed to the start of the second half. So we've come upon halftime here in this NFC Divisional Round matchup. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. Now out comes their leader and the captain of this offense back onto the field. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, give him 14. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick, he's been decisive, and he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. Running game working, they'll stick with it on first down. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 12 yards there as they move the chains. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get it across midfield and down into Cardinal territory. 
It's a gain of six, moves him to a manageable third and two situation. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. The Saints on third down, just one for five to this point. Here it's third and two. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. Right back to him on first down. And room there to work it inside the 25. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. Two yards on the pick up there, but it's enough to give him a new set of downs. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. Throws a quick hitter on the slant. That's complete. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. They'll run it now out of the gun, and they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. It's a pickup of four, but they're still a yard short here with fourth down, fourth coming. This team doesn't mind running the ball in any situation, and I thought he was going to get the first down the way the play developed, but the defense closed in and stopped him just about a yard short. They'll run it now out of the gun, but he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. They only got a couple, but a couple's all that they needed as they convert on fourth. Running game working. They'll stick with it on first down. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense gets a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. touchdown here in the playoffs perhaps the week off energized him a great article in the paper this morning basically saying that they would not have won the division without him and he's not their only piece but i think that's a fair statement it's easy to say it this way he's their main cow Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Cardinals offense now ready to get their first opportunity here in the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the most, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. Here they go to Johnson again. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. 
Well, so much for him being bottled up throughout the day. Finally finds a way to break through and get a really nice gain. The defense have felt great about what they had going. Now they've got to turn their attention to getting it back in that direction. Can they bottle him up again? Because I'd say after that run, confidence is pretty high for him. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. We have not seen a whole lot of wide-open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long. And they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. Uh, you got a young quarterback, you know, maybe that's just an example of a growing pain for him. I think you're right about that because when the game starts to move fast and it moves quickly on him, a lot of times they fall back on what they know best, their arm. He's, he's slinging it on this one. Had a wide open target but didn't have the proper footwork to increase his accuracy. And that's caught inside the 30. And he'll go down but not before getting this inside the 30. A big gain of 39 on third. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball is now streaking towards him. That little arc on it, he's got to find a way to get his head around and make a play on the football. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they are hoping... This big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Now Rosen over the middle. That's caught by Meredith. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Polluting the pressure right, and avoids the contact by sliding. Give him seven on the tuck and run, and it'll get him a new set of downs. When they watch film of this game and hand out the grade sheets, he's going to really like getting a double plus on this play. Why? He scrambles and picks up a first down. But what else does he do? Protects himself by sliding and avoiding the big hit. Double plus, big time play. Ball start, offense. That's going to set him back five yards. A false start backs him up five, first and 15. All right, here we go. Three, nine, three. Out of the gun, here's Josh Rosen. Underneath for Johnson. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14 yard line. Four yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a second and 11. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. in the throw on second down. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden the secondary. They feel I good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. He's got his man. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. As his guys are in for six. And the Cardinals cut into that lead. And Pointer, they found a gap there on the post pattern in the middle of the end zone. And ordinarily, that's a tough spot to find because there's usually coverage to take away that portion of the field. But they found a gap and they exploited it. They go for just one here as it's up and good. And that will get them one closer. So that one a long 11 play drive. And it winds up in a touchdown for Arizona. This is fielded at the goal line. Oh, leaves him behind on the spin. 
And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. He's already hit pay dirt twice. He's up over 100 yards. He is feeling good. He's just zipping along today. Everything coming together for him. It's that type of a day that you see a back just kind of have a grin on his face every time his number is called because he doesn't feel like there are going to be any lost yardage plays. Nothing but big-time positive runs. Making the sideline grin as well. Despite the lead here in the fourth, they're still taking shots. Not content to sit on this lead at all. To me, it raises the question of what's right in this game nowadays. Do you sit on the ball and run it because you have enough of a lead? Or do you try and extend it because you always feel like the other team can come back? Extend it. Have some fun. The Saints on third down, lacking much success. Just two for seven to this point. This is third and seven. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Right back to him on first down. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. I think this defense tired of seeing him run the football on this D-line. Probably getting sick of the O-line as well. And as I'm watching this, I'm thinking about a conversation I had with Adam Gase, the head coach of the Miami Dolphins in the offseason. He told me that he asked his running backs each week for their favorite runs. Give me your three top runs. And right now, you're seeing a guy that's probably using his top runs to great advantage in this game. He is in a zone. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. And a nice carry there of 15 yards. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. They juked him. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. Brendan, every great running backs coach I've talked with has always talked about when you have great vision, you're not consciously thinking about your cuts and your moves, you're just doing them. And I think that's what we're seeing tonight. He's about running them into submission, uh, hasn't he? You took the words right out of my mouth. I was just going to use that phrase. He has run them into submission. Wave the white flag. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. Hurry up, here we go. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. Tyler Lockett saving his best for the playoffs with his third touchdown of the game. And the Saints add on to their lead. And he's able to put it through. And he keeps carrying the ball into the end zone. And in this one, he's sort of carrying the team on his back. He's the reason that they lead right now. No question about it. And you talk about on his back. He's not minding the extra weight at all, is he? Carrying that just as lightly as he does the football. Yeah, what those, a great performance so far. Those three touchdowns, it's got him in the lead. The Cardinal offense here ready to take over. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked. But you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Harris has it over the middle. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. Great way to start the drive. 20 big ones at a first down. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. 
second and ten. It's Rosen again. It's brought in by Harris. Oh, and Nelson space to operate. Yeah, he's got this to the 30 before being taken down. A good pick up there, 26 yards. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh, boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. Now Rosen looking to throw out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. Throwing again, it's Rosen. That's caught on the left side by Kirk. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Two catches now in this divisional round matchup. That one, a first down. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. The busy night continues for Johnson. And a decent game there as that takes us to the two-minute warning. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. So the Cardinals, they've got the football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Here's Rose in the throw. And oh, not only did he drop it, he dropped it in the end zone. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. And for a third time tonight, he's intercepted. Snags it for the pick. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. How about the big boys snagging one? You don't see that every week. No, you don't, but a lot of them are just reliving their old dreams, going back to when they were in youth football and in high school. They didn't always play defensive line. Some of them actually handled the football, and you can see the flashback when he grabbed that one. And he'll get this up past the five to the seven-yard line. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now, I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. They'll run it now out of the gun, and he's able to get up here to the 26. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards, and that'll make it second and a foot or so. They'll run it now out of the gun, and they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. Back to throw. He's going to float this one. And that's caught inside the 35. A big time play there for New Orleans. 41 yards. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. And what are the whistles for? Timeout. So they'll stop the clock here in a game that's been decided in the closing seconds. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Open space inside the 10. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Tyler Lockett taking it in from 24 yards out. And the Saints now add six to their lead. And they're able to up the lead by one more. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. Very short kick. This will be taken by one of the up men. And solid field position here to start as they get it out to the 40-yard line. 
even after that big time return. It's not looking great for them today, but if nothing else, even if the miracle doesn't happen, they can turn to this play and say, hey, we can move forward. Maybe it's a building block for the rest of the season. One final shot here for Rosen. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. He's got a man complete. And he'll take this one in for the Arizona touchdown. Alan Hearns, 60 no, 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 yards. And the Cardinals get a bit closer. So, my man, another touchdown. They're looking like the number one seed that they earned throughout the year. Looking pretty dominant right now. We knew the road to the Super Bowl would run right through this stadium. Somebody's going to have to come in here and beat these guys. Good luck. I don't think it's happening this weekend. No, definitely not this. Money back.
that was great. I mean, you had a great day today. The game is really starting to slow down for you, isn't it? I can't wait to see what you're gonna do on Sunday. Good job. Need cool up right now, go into up right now. Yeah, we really touch, we touch 
October, I'm about to f*** another state. He went down in Arizona, don't get me involved. An empty box in the car means they coming for all. I had six phones, I got rid of them all. We get hit and sit down, we don't talk to the law. Yeah, they think I'm tripping, they listen. They know our every move, yeah, they want us all in prison. That's why I can't sleep at night until they get in. I'm on another mission, I'm just young and I'm living. Yeah, I done seen the better stuff from Jimbo. 25 life in the can't talk. Never met a man that they can't talk. We're talking on the phones, we can hear us. Seven in the morning and they in my home. My bank accounts froze, what is going on? Why it all start going wrong? My phone still echo, the feds won't let go. Money never sleeps when you're the black Gordon Gecko. Line looking like they waiting on the retro. Sixes, sixes. I feel special. Resell and I never pay retail. My shoebox money afforded me the spree wells. And that then courted me a V12. Avoid the phones if it's sounding like a seashell. Too much clicking in the connection. Connect the dots with my connect for my protection. Face to face, I place my like a drive through Feel it, you know how I do. Push. I done seen the best of them, Jando. 25 life in the can't Never met a man that they can't talk. We're talking on the phones, they can hear us. Seven in the morning and they in my home. My bank accounts froze, what is going on? Why it all start going wrong? From talking on the oh, phone. Too many handle business on my own cause you ain't right and that's I don't condone I got homies behind the wall wishing they was home they got jammed up kept discussing business on the phone but Scotty, Scotty boy we boy we 200 bands off them 20 dollar flips I'm going by myself when it's time to up that way police don't have a clue when turn up <laughs> I'm dolo when I'm out making different moves pull up to the shop just to pick and choose I'm that don't get confused, cause even when them prayed I did, I didn't lose. Machine. I done seen the best of them, Jando. 25 life in the cast of Never met a man that they can't talk. We're talking on the phones, they can hear us. Seven in the morning and they in my home. My bank accounts froze, what is going on? Why it all start going wrong? From talking on the phones. Yeah. 
children's story. Their life's a life's a so what you want? Every day I struggle with it. Only God could tell me slipping. I'm infinitely big, big through the genesis. Dead presidents drop a gem on them. Your nerve, these the last days. Throw your, throw your get money, quiet your song. Have a, have a thoughts for the cream and the gay. For the money, only green is the green is the. I'm a player on the late night tail. So these, so these, so these, see the prototypes. Fingertips, reservoir dog, to the skull, ignorant. Can I live? Still feel it. It's a death, for protecting neck. Three, three boys in the Cadillac. Grave digger, kiss a death, for protecting neck. Shame on the three, three boys in the Cadillac. Grave digger. Money over on my hands down. Here lies, I'm getting paid, but never take a loss on my hands down. Only take a ticket when I'm dead. I'm the gang three times on my hands down. Been from the cradle to the grave. Now your favorite rapper name. Trouble something nine to six. You wish you could read these and know the ledge. I'm your, I'm your what's that? I smell, I smell. Let me count my. Um, five, four, three, two, one, run. Hi, my name is Dirk Cobain. Like a, here I go to the next episode. Ain't no now this explosive beast coast. Yeah. The mother ride or die for my, strictly for my. Survival of the fish. That's the sign of the police. I'm in deep cover. Skirt, skirt, lean back. Give me one more chance. They say Jesus folks and the devil wear Prada, but I'm so, so deaf. God can't tell me nothing. Right this on my death certificate. I gave you power. 21 questions. Like, who? They're warning. Watch them flashing like paparazzi. Two words. Two words. Get money. Tonight's the night. Guess who's back on my blood? Rather you need me. But town. This. On that quiet storm, see your NY, top of New York, with a pitch fall. They call a podcast Poppy. King Kongs, I see they trying to copy. Diamonds in the chains, bust down wrists. And you ain't never seen no like this. What? Tell me something I don't know. What? Tell me something I don't know. What? Tell me something I don't know. Like when it drop home, game in the choke code. I be out on a late night. I was in a play fight. See slime break night. This break night. My wrist watch is like a break light. And you can get it right on your grave site. Uh, so tell me something I don't know. $50 pizza when I'm eating in Soho. Ah, I, I heard that you in love with the stuff in your hitting them. They hate me, they hate me. What should I do? Keep getting money. It's funny, I was just like you. Super Bowl Sunday. Put the facts. Security guard told Kevin Hart to relax. Oh! Tell me something I don't know. What? Tell me something I don't know. What? Tell me something I don't know. Like when they drop home, gave him the choke Tell me something I don't know. What? Tell me something I don't know. What? Tell me something I don't know. Like when it drop home, gave in the choke code. Uh, I reinvented myself. They thought I hated it. I reinvented myself and upgraded it. Traded in the Jews. Copped a couple new ones. Lost a couple friends and got a couple new ones. Upstairs and downstairs, the balcony. These ocean side views, the alchemy. Ain't nothing crazy like the city in the summertime. So when it's winter, I'll still be on my summer. Hello, everybody. It's the coach. This is a special edition of the NFC. We are at the oldest continually operating stadium in the NFL as you get a look inside Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Coming up, it's a battle to represent the NFC in this year's Super Bowl. And we've got a classic in store between the New Orleans Saints and the...